You probably remember Ronnie Jackson. He's the White House physician who came out in January and said that Trump has the strength of a hippo and the body to match. You remember that? <laughs> right. Well, he said that Trump was incredibly healthy, which shocked everybody. Like, even God was in the front row, like, the <laughs> Well, anyway, we didn't know much about him back then, and we didn't need to. But once Trump nominated Jackson for a cabinet position, people started digging into his past like he was dating Taylor Swift. We've got some breaking news on that story. We started with new and potentially damaging allegations against Ronnie Jackson. The White House physician nominated to lead the Department of Veterans Affairs provided a large supply of Percocet, a prescription opioid to a White House military office staff member. A nurse on his staff said Dr. Jackson had written himself prescriptions. The word is, is that on overseas trips in particular, uh, that uh, Admiral would go down the, the aisle way of the airplane and say, all right, who wants to go to sleep and hand out the prescription so drugs you're like they were like candy. An, like an Ambien type. Yeah, that's exactly right. He hands out uh, prescriptions like candy. In fact, in the White House, they call him the candy man. The White House physician was being fast and loose with prescription drugs, which is really dangerous. I mean, can you imagine if Ben Carson was on that plane and he took a sleeping pill? <laughs> He'd be waking up like, did we land yet? What time is it? He'd be like, sir, it's the year 2045. <laughs> Now, now, look, now, look, to be fair, to be fair, giving sleeping pills to staff on overseas flights is apparently kind of standard practice in many administrations. Plus, I mean, what, like, what would you rather do? Get some sleep or stay up and watch Trump lick KFC off his fingers for 14 hours? <laughs> I think we know which one you choose. But distributing drugs like he was the Stringer Bell of Air Force One is just the beginning of Ronnie Jackson's story. Sources telling CNN the White House doctor allegedly became intoxicated during multiple overseas trips on duty, including one in 2015, where sources say he banged on the hotel room door of a female employee in the middle of the night. According to this memo, at a Secret Service going away party, Jackson got drunk and wrecked a government vehicle. Okay, this is just shocking. <laughs> no, I, I can't believe that between Trump's two doctors, Ronnie Jackson is the one who might have a drinking problem. <laughs> I mean, I guess it makes sense. Alcohol could explain the glowing bill of health that he gave Trump a few months ago when he was like, Donald Trump is the healthiest man alive. He's six foot three, 160 pounds, and there's two of him standing in front of me. <laughs> I love them both. I love you so much, man. And so with these allegations piling up, politicians of both parties are hoping that Trump will reconsider his pick. What was being discussed last night here on CNN uh, was truly concerning about the possibility that Dr. Jackson had been drunk on duty. The allegations that have come out against Admiral Jackson are very disturbing. Probably makes sense for the president to spend a little bit more time doing research on his own nominees. It would give us serious cause for concern as to whether or not he'd be the right man for the job. Man, these lawmakers are not messing around. Although it, it is funny how they don't want Jackson running Veterans Affairs, but they don't care if he stays on as the president's physician. <laughs> it's like, this drunk maniac doesn't belong near our heroes. He belongs at the White House next to Donald Trump. <laughs> now, look, this may surprise you, but uh, Trump doesn't seem to mind Ronnie Jackson's shady past. I if anything, in Trump's eyes, Dr. Ronnie is the victim. I said to Dr. Jackson, what do you need it for? So I don't want to put a man through a process like this. It's too ugly and too disgusting. And he has to listen to the abuse that he has to... I wouldn't, if I were him, actually, in many ways, I'd love to be him. But the fact is, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. What? <laughs> in many ways, you'd love to be him? Like, I, I don't understand what that means. Is, is Trump saying he wishes he weren't the president? Or is, he, is it just like Trump wishing that he were his own doctor? <laughs> he's just like, he's so lucky. He gets to see me naked all the time, folks. <laughs> Do you know how nice it would be if I could see my dick? <laughs> so beautiful. So beautiful. <laughs> but believe it or not, the administration was still pushing Dr. Jackson's nomination forward. And Kellyanne Conway even brought up a surprise character witness. 
The White House defiant and defending Ronnie Jackson's nomination to lead the VA, pointing to praise from former President Obama and pushing back on accusations against Jackson. I hope you're aware of the great referral for Ronnie Jackson. Continue to groom and promote this highly capable officer, a quote, exceptional physician and leader. Ronnie has been a dedicated and valued member of my team. This came from President Barack Obama, 2014, 2016. Oh, now you want us to trust Obama? No, Kellyanne, no. Too late. That Kenyan invented ISIS. You can't have it both ways. <laughs> Nuh-uh. OK, fine, fine. Let's play Kellyanne's game. Yes, it's true. Obama praised Ronnie Jackson and suggested that he be promoted. But he never said Jackson should be promoted to run the VA. That's an enormous government bureaucracy with 360,000 employees. You can't take that one recommendation and move it to something else. That's like looking great in a bathrobe and someone makes you the new pope. That's not how it works. <laughs> because don't forget, don't forget, even if he didn't drink, even if he didn't drive drunk, and even if he didn't overprescribe drugs, Ronnie Jackson would still be far from qualified to run the VA. And in a way, all those senators who oppose him are lucky that these drug and alcohol allegations are coming up. Because if there's one thing we know, it's that on its own, being completely unqualified for a position doesn't keep you out of Donald Trump's cabinet. <laughs> if anything, it gets you in. And as far as experience is concerned, the Veterans Administration, which is approximately 13 million people, is so big, you could run the biggest hospital system in the world, and it's small time compared to the Veterans Administration. So nobody has the experience. <laughs> Donald Trump is like logic kryptonite. <laughs> No one has this exact experience. So in his mind, it doesn't matter if we just hired a seasoned professional or a toaster oven. <laughs> and look, I, I get that no one has run an organization as big as the VA, but you can still try giving it to someone with some relevant experience. Like at one point in time, no one had been to space. But NASA didn't go, hey, why don't we just send Jerry? Jerry's my dentist, <laughs> fantastic guy. No, they sent astronauts who trained for it, who previously flew planes, who studied space, who worked countless hours making black ladies do math for them. <laughs> and look, look, at the end of the day... At the end of the day, we know where this is headed. The president will have to find a new VA nominee, and knowing Trump, he's not going to search for a qualified person. He's just gonna pick another guy who says nice things about him. So I guess what I'm saying is, congratulations, VA Secretary Kanye West.